everyone and welcome back to Carefree Caravanning. Um, you wonderful people out there, you've been sending us your advice and tips um, for us to share with all the other members of the caravanning community. So this week we are going to do part three of advice and tips for beginners. Yeah. Well, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I said no sweets. What? I said no sweets. But People have been writing in saying you. But the Swedish jar's got its own. Far it's too got many its own sweets. following. I mean, no. there are too many of you to mention. But what are you doing? Come on. But we always have sweets. Part three. Part three. <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, Colin Murray. Um, so on the email, hi everyone. By the way, um, right, Colin Murray. So hi, Colin, and thank you so much for your email. Um, Colin says that he's seen many people struggling to get onto their pitches because the tow ball is being held captive by the stabiliser. Um, the stabiliser on caravan act, and caravans act as a brake because of the way it operates to stabilise the van when towing. Uh, his suggestion is upon arrival at site, before reversing onto your pitch uh, and to make it easier to manoeuvre, release the stabiliser first. Um, you'll find it much easier to reverse. The caravan and uh, sorry, the caravan will not come off the table. Yeah. Okay. So, great, great, great uh, tip, Colin. Thanks very much for that. Um, yeah. It's a. I mean, I don't do it. I forget to do it. I know we should, but um, for those who don't know, so if you are really new, um, when you hitch the caravan up, you normally have two levers, one small one, um, and as the um, the caravan goes onto the tow ball, the small one will lock down, and then you know the caravan is locked onto the tow ball. Once that's there, um, you've then got a big black lever that, that's the top one, and that just squeezes down. Now, what that does is a stabilizer, as Colin said. So, um, when, you, when you pull that lever down, um, it's basically pushing two little sort of suck, uh, not suction pads, they're sort of two pads that go onto the tow ball. Um, and what that does is if the caravan starts to snake or move around um, uncontrollably or it shouldn't, you know, in a way it shouldn't do, that will basically stabilise the caravan. Um, so it's, what Colin said is right, if you, uh, just when you arrive on pitch, if you are going to uh, reverse the caravan, just lift that top lever up, the stabiliser one, and that just releases um, the pads away from the tow ball. Otherwise, when you're towing, it, it's not going to go exactly the way you want it because the stabiliser is trying to correct it. Um, so yeah, fantastic, fantastic tip. So just lift up just the top one, uh, the stabiliser bar. Fantastic tip. Thanks Colin for that. Great idea. Okay, and Rob Floyd has also emailed us. Hi Rob, thank you very much Hi for your email. Rob. And he says that he tries to utilise service pitches to make life a little easier. No slumming it for him, he says. Yeah, same as that. <laughs> uh, one problem that he sometimes comes across is when the drain for the waste is either slightly raised or uphill. If it is, more often than not, the waste water doesn't drain away very efficiently, thus resulting in the water in your sink or shower taking an age to drain away, or at worst, just sitting there and not draining away at all. To overcome this, he uses... Um, loft board stilts. I will put a picture in now, hopefully. If I can yeah. do that. Uh, right. Just one moment, please, Keith. Um, he places them upside down, which allows you to place the drain pipe hose and water pipe feed, which will make it more sturdy, all the way to the outside drain, which then allows plenty of height, allowing the water to drain away quickly and efficiently. He finds this works a treat. 100% each time and these can be bought either individually from B&Q for about £1.50 or you can buy a pack of 12 for 15 He said they're plastic, they're really lightweight, so easy to carry around. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, what? You alright? No. What's wrong? No, 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 I just, um, yeah. That's a great idea. Um, fantastic idea, Rob. Thank you very much indeed. Basically, it's just keeping the uh, wastewater Piper's Michelle said, just off the ground. So um, picture will show you, fantastic idea. Great one, thanks for that Rob. I appreciate your comments and your emails. Next one. That's um, from Bill, Bill Gordon. Yeah. Um, Bill wrote to us um, about which awning pegs uh, to use for hard standing. He's worried about the gravel and the stones damaging his awning carpet. Um, right, okay, so that's, I mean, we've been on some pretty dire uh, hard standing where the stones are 
they're like sharp rocks they're really really sharp aren't they they don't sort of come through the carpet um, but they're just uncomfortable um, so don't worry about the stones damaging the carpet they won't you're more than likely going to have the uh, the step that would damage the carpet because mm. um, that would probably go through it um, now in as far as uh, rock pegs um, John and Al from Gnarly Boot they also asked about rock pegs because they have difficulty getting them into the hard standing right um, yeah rock pegs we use the um, sort of that length one so I think about 12 inches um, and when you put rock pegs in um, you know they're the ones with probably the green or the um, even the uh, red or fluorescent uh, little plastic bit on the top um, when you put the rock pegs in um, don't be tempted to use like a rubber mallet um, you're wasting your time you need a small club hammer um, they're only about that big and um, they're about a fiver at B&Q but they've got the big head on them um, and if you whack them in they go in normally really really easily um, one thing to remember when you're putting rock pegs in um, try and put them in at an angle so is it 45 degrees mm. so 45 degree angles um, so if uh, that's the awning you want to put the rock peg in like that if you're going to encounter any uh, wind or severe weather then it's best to put two in and then do them like that um, and drive them in as hard as you can as, as far as you can now I think both have said as well or, or somebody else said didn't they about how do we get them out um, so to remove the rock pegs um, if you use the type that I've said don't be tempted to use the little hook you can get you can buy that little hook thing that goes into the, the little green thing and then pulls them out if you try and use that hook on rock pegs when they're um, all the way in it's just going to snap the, the little plastic on the top and I've done it and probably many of you have done the same you've done it loads of times so don't be tempted to try and get that hook in and pull them out straight away um, what you need to do is you need a claw hammer so just a standard claw hammer um, if you can just if you can just tap the top of the head of the um, the rock peg just gently from left to right both way always now what that does is that's going to shock the uh, the peg and it will actually loosen it believe it or not and once you've just tapped it a few times don't tap it so you bend it just tap it a little bit just the top um, and then you'll find that if you put the claw hammer under the head and just gently lift it and if you lift it out the way it went in straight so if it's, that's the peg at that angle don't try and pull it out this way just pull it out the way it went in um, and you'll find it will come out really really simply it come out a couple of inches with the uh, claw hammer and then you can just use your hand and pull it straight out so yeah. I'm sorry I think set. that was a last minute email that came in with that question so I didn't have it I was gonna say out. it's not yeah, yeah. yeah so, so apologies yeah um, so just remember a little tap on the rock head on the rock peg to get them out um, don't go mad don't don't bend them just a little tap and it will shock them um, and don't be tempted to use the little claw at the start so you, once you've got it loose if you want to use the claw then just use the the little hook to bring the rest out okay okay so that's that one moving on um, we did a video on different types of awnings and we had a lot of messages from all of you regarding your awnings um, and a common difficulty is actually getting it onto the rail now David Smith wrote to us and David says he has a large air awning and finds that the weight is an issue when erecting it so what he does is he sprays the awning channel with a silicon spray which helps the awning slide along much easier um, and he also has an opening halfway up the side of the channel which makes it easier to start the process yeah i think of. i think most caravan the awning rail you have two entries on either side the front on either the front and the back one's right at the bottom and then one's normally about three quarters of the way up so yeah it, it's great to start it three quarters of the way up if you can if you can yeah. but then also bend it 1000 hi uh, hi Benjit. hi Benjit. and sorry hi david as well um says you can buy an awning pulley from camper i've seen these um i've seen videos of them yeah they look great um basically if you're not sure what they are it's like a piece of string that you connect uh to the awning when you put it into the awning rail mm -hmm. 
um, and then the string goes in the awning rail right to the other end where you're going to want the um, awning to eventually end up and then you've got a uh, like a ratchet that connects to the bottom of your caravan and you just literally ratchet and it just pulls the string which then pulls the awning all the way through to the um, other side um, great I mean if you one person putting the awning up on your own or it's a huge heavy awning then that's a great idea um, I mean I'm sure many of you who've watched this have probably been in the same position that uh, I've been in when I've been putting the awning up is you, you know you get it up sort of halfway uh, and then you before you know it it then comes back down again you say oh for god's sake so anyway uh, great great little tip let somebody shout show <laughs> yeah yeah michelle i need your help so thanks very much for that dave yeah. smith and also benjit 1000 so let's yeah. move on to petrolhead and david duffy, duffy yes do you want me to read that or? uh well they petrolhead and david duffy hi how how are you both i hope you're well uh they say that regarding caravan safety it's worth mentioning that the wheel bolts need to be checked regularly um, petrol, petrol head <coughs> excuse me, has seen two accidents uh, this year uh, caused by wheels coming off due to the loose wheel bolts. There is a plate um, by the side of the door and it has the correct torque settings for the bolts and a reasonable torque wrench can be purchased. It's quite cheap. Um, I think we bought our torque wrench from I think it was Halfords. Ours was, was about 1999. Um, that it is something that you know really you should do every time you're venturing out in your caravan yeah, it's just check the torque the, the the tightness of the wheel nuts petrol um, head said it's best to check them every trip yeah 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 okay so thank you for that uh petrol head and david duffy david. howard b hello howard how are you uh, right we recently talked about using tire pal to monitor your tyre pressure. Sorry, this is from Howard B and North Lanx Scotsman and Dave Smith. I was just about to say that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, right, yeah, so these got, um, so Howard B, North Lanx Scotsman, David Smith, um, they all wrote to us to tell us about um, Tyron bands that they also have fitted their caravans as well as the tyre pal. Now, Lord North Lancashire Scotsman, he went into a little bit more detail um, to say that these bands prevent the tyre coming off the rim when a blowout happens and prevents a lot of instability as it happens and allows you to bring the caravan to a safe stop. One other benefit is preventing any damage to the wheel arch area and possibly the side of the caravan. If a blowout happens that may well spoil your holiday and definitely be very costly. Tyres are made up with steel in their construction so this will be very destructive at 60 miles per hour. Also he says traffic police cars have these fitted and if they're good enough for them and at approximately 150 pounds it's worth pe every penny rather than the worry and inconvenience should it happen to you yeah um we haven't got we both. haven't got tyron bands fitted on this uh we do have tire pal system um which was quite recent we or, or we put on some time ago i should say um tyron bands are good they do stop the tire from coming off um, and they, I believe that if you do have an act, if you do have a blowout, um, it it basically controls. You know, it won't let the tire come off the wheels, so um, you can slow down uh, safely. Now, the negative side, in my opinion, I know um, uh, Dan Trudgeon, He he um, has had them fitted on his new caravan, and um, as he said in his video, um, the negative side. Uh, is is that yes they are quite expensive um, but another negative from my point of view is is if you have a tire that blows out which has this system on um, not every tire ma uh, repairer is going to touch it they have to be Tyron brand approved um, which not every sort of tire place is so um, yeah I, I, it's not something that I, I mean we're not going to go down that road um, no. So we're happy with just our tyre pal. Yeah, I mean, well, people, well, we've just had our first trip with tyre pal, and you were really happy having yeah, that, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, yeah. As Michelle said, this is our first time using tyre pal, and it, you know, it gave me reassurance, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's lovely to another. I mean, being a man, I love the gadgets in the car, so it's just another gadget to watch out for. Um, yeah. But it's, it's fantastic, you know, especially after the seeing Jane and, and, and Helen's experience. Sorry, after seeing yeah. Jane and Helen's experience, it's lovely to have that reassurance. Yeah, in the yeah, car. yeah. 
Dan Brown and Steve Deboer. I don't know how to pronounce your surname, Steve. Deboer, Deboer, Deboer. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Gentlemen, good. I hope you are both well. Uh, they mentioned buying a second hand. Ah, oh, yeah, the Alco lock. So we said on a video uh, some time ago, um, about Alco asked us to mention that if you buy a second-hand uh, chassis lock, the Alco secures chassis lock um, from anywhere, um, then you must make sure that you get the registration card. Um, if you don't have the registration card, Alco won't touch you or the lock. Um, they really, really won't, and they wanted us to stress that. Um, but something else they did tell me, and in fairness, I put my hands up, I apologise, I did forget to say it, but both um, Dan and Steve have, have just reminded me, is it's imperative if you are going to buy a second-hand Alco lock, a uh, chassis lock, um, even if they give you the card, you have to make sure that they have deregistered it with Alco. Um, now, a few apologies for not mentioning that on the previous video, um, but yes, if, if they haven't deregistered it, so if I had it and Michelle bought it from me, I gave her the card, but she didn't, um, I, I mean, it was still registered in my name, and then Michelle phoned up to register it, they won't touch her. They just will not, they will just refuse Bankly because she is not the legal owner because the legal owner hasn't deregistered it. So you have to make sure <coughs> that important. the uh, previous owner has deregistered it. Personally, I wouldn't even take their word for it. I'd, maybe a phone call. Alco are so helpful. They are so helpful. Um, we might even put the number, if we, we put their helpline number in the description below. So if you're thinking about buying a secondhand one, um, just give them a call when you get the registration, say look, it's the new, you know, to the seller. Do you mind if I just give, give Alco a call? And they'll be more than happy just to say, yep, yeah, it's been deregistered, so then you can go ahead and yeah. register it. Good idea. So apologies for not mentioning that. I did forget. So thanks very much for that, Dan and Steve. Right, now, <coughs> oh, this is from Tina Jones. Hi, Tina. Sounds like you've had a terrible time. <coughs> yeah. Um, oh, she's terrible. written to us um, because she has a word of warning for all first-time buyers. She says, when buying a caravan, even from a reputable dealer, get someone in to check the caravan before you buy it. Get a mobile caravan service person in to check it. She says, don't do what she did and believe everything the dealer tells you. She bought her caravan through a dealer who she thought was respectful and trustworthy, but it turns out he wasn't either, or they weren't either. She says, definitely check the tyres. All the tyres on their caravan were from the year 2005 and they've only just got the caravan. There was a lot of work that needed to be done, uh, loads, I'm not gonna mention it all, but there was absolutely loads. And um, she still hasn't used it, and now it's in with a qualified caravan repair gentleman. Um, she says, you may be buying from a reputable dealer, but get someone in to check the caravan before you buy it. Yeah. Don't, I'm... sorry, don't, this is her final words, don't do what she did and believe everything the dealer tells you. Yeah, I, I think, <coughs> Caravans are probably, in some cases, th the second largest investment that people will buy, second to a house. Because, um, you know, if, if you're buying a caravan, say a new caravan, um, can be 20, 25, 30, even 35,000 pounds. Yeah. So that's a huge, huge investment. Even if you're buying a second hand one at 10 or even 15,000, it's a massive investment. So, um, yeah. Some dealers um, are not as reputable as others. Um, if you fall in love with the caravan um, and you haven't heard of the dealer, maybe do a little bit of research, Google it, see if there's yeah, any reviews about so. the dealership. Um, and then as, um, as, as Tina says, it may be worth, you know, I mean, if you're spending that sort of money, you want a second opinion, surely. Definitely I mean, get a second certainly opinion. if it's second hand. <coughs> Excuse me. If it's second hand, I do yeah. apologise. Um, then just get a second opinion. I mean, if you're buying a house, your mortgage company are going to want you to have a second opinion, as in the value of the house, which is why you have it surveyed. Yeah, um, yeah. It's so, a sad story. I'm really sorry to hear that. It is Tina. a sad story, and thank you so much, Tina, yeah. for your email. Um, yeah. I mean, we're not scaremongering. It's just, you know, Tina's story, it's, and she just wants it to be a word of warning. Yeah, for you. I mean, right. you know, when we read your email and and. It was very, very detailed about all the things that had gone wrong. I mean, it really was a nightmare. Yeah, we were um, shocked. 
moving on. Um, Des Clark and Kevin M. Good afternoon, yes. gentlemen. Hi, Hi, gentlemen. How are you? Well, uh, they store collapsible water carriers beside the... Beside no, no, the... no, no, no. You're not reading it properly, darling. We store collapsible water. Oh, no, we do, yeah. Water. <laughs> well, well, you say that. We don't anymore because we're on service pitches. We don't because we're always on service pitches. No, but before we used to um, store the collapsible, of, you know, one or two. Yeah, you no, you're it? right. No, collapsible pitches. You, you're <laughs> eating. But it's just I said lace. no sweets. I know, it's only lace. It's only the first one. <sighs> He's incorrigible, honestly. It All those people holiday. worried about your teeth. I know, but I'm on holiday. Right. Right, so, Forget sorry. Forget your teeth. Let's move on to the water carriers. Um, yeah, so we, well, we're always on a service pitch now, as we started to say. Um, collapsible water containers just beside the aqua roll. If, for example, at night we would run out of water, you could just, you know, once you've had a shower, you could just top up the aqua roll instead of if you have to walk a fair distance, you know, to the nearest tap. Um, but Des, a lot of people didn't get that, though, did they? No, they, people think that we people, fill it up. <laughs> a lot of people thinking, well, why are you doing it four trips to the aqua yeah, roll? But that wasn't the idea. That wasn't. The idea is if we want to shower at night, um, even if it's a cold shower because it's hot or whatever, then we just top it up. So maybe 10 litres, a 10 litre carrier, it just tops it up, keeps it full. Um, yeah, we, we, we obviously filling. we obviously didn't explain that um, clearly enough because no, we don't some use people... our water carriers to fill up the whole aqua roll. I mean, that would be bonkers. <laughs> no, we just um, top it up. But Des and Kev, they say um, a top tip is to get yourself a second aqua roll, fill both to start with. Then when when one is empty, simply swap the pump head over the full one, and then take the empty one to refill at your leisure. He said he's. Um, Dad says he's been doing that for years now, um, as do many seasoned caravanners, and he never has to worry about running out of water. Yeah, I, I mean, in fairness, um, from both sides of the coin, it's great if you can do that, but aqua rolls, they're 40 litres. Um, we wouldn't have the space, even though it's just two of us in a four berth caravan, but we would not have space for two aqua rolls. Um, and you know the smaller caravans as well may be struggling with space to carry two across it's just a, my opinion or our opinion mm. um, but yeah if you've got the space then or if you're seasoned you know if you're on a seasoned pitch then absolutely I'd have two we don't even three even but um, <laughs> makes me laugh he says um, many seasoned caravanners do this <laughs> we're obviously not seasoned enough <laughs> no yeah <laughs> we're still novices <laughs> yeah um, right, moving on. So thanks for that, guys. Thank you very much indeed. So Stuart H has got a few tips. It says, when leaving the site, after removing the waste water, take the pipe fittings used to connect the waste master uh, to the caravan um, up to the washing up area and give it a good clean and dry off so it's nice and clean for storage for the next use. Yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, to be honest with you, I I've never really done it. I, sh I should do really, but yeah, just the the pipe, take it yeah. up, give it a good old clean out. I mean, we would do that. I normally do that at the end of the season. You know, we take take everything and pure clean and everything. Uh, we take it home and do it at home. But he says season, once he's washed it, he then puts it in a bag, um, and in a bag, and also yeah. the waste master he does the same with that. Washes it down, puts it, puts it in a bag, and then they're all you know nice and clean and ready for next time. And you're not bringing in any dirt into the caravan. Yeah. Yeah, great, great. So it's another um, tip as well. He's got a few tips. Uh, he uses pieces of hardwood decking under various of various sizes for levelling under the steadies on grass. <coughs> Excuse me, I reminds me our <coughs> we lost one of our steadies feet coming here this time. Oh, so I need to get another one of those. But yeah, um, you can buy the. I mean, we we just bought the blocks of four, haven't we? Mm. Um, so if the caravan is quite uh, unlevel then you can just buy these little blocks but uh, what um, uh, Stuart says is just buy decking and then you can uh, level it that way great idea okay and he oh here comes the man to cut the grass the man to cut the grass uh, yeah. he also says that he finds some fittings are fixed with very small short screws hang on going to come back in a minute <laughs> yeah um, yeah this is actually really interesting um, some of the fittings um, 
are fixed with very sh small short screws like hooks in the bathroom and what have you. He's gone away. He's Quick. gone away. Right, yeah. this results in the hooks, hinges and towels, towel rails um, that can fall off and leave holes in your yeah. wall. Um, he says you can't use a longer screw as the cabinet wood is too thin. What he does is use Gorilla wood glue. I've got to go quickly. It's coming back. <laughs> um, a little applied with a matchstick to the old screw hole and and the screw, and then screw in, wiping off the surplus. Leave for 24 hours back. before use. This glue expands like foam, so you don't need to use too much of it. Um, but if it does, leave it to harden, and you can remove it with a Stanley blade. Yeah, I've. I've I keep hearing about Gorilla Glue and Gorilla Tape. Um, never used it, never tried it, but I hear it's like the thing at the moment to never have. Never heard of it. Um, I've never heard of it. Yeah, no, I've heard of it. Um, yeah, great tip because, as you said, I mean, we had, uh, in fact, it was on the previous caravan, we had um, the two towel hooks in the bathroom. Uh, one was loose and the other came off. Yes. Um, and the one that was loose, um, you try to screw the screw back in and forget it. It's just, I mean, a miniature screw. So um, I, I think I used some sort of silicon or, or yoohoo or something like that yes. at the time, but it lasted and then caravan was stolen, so it wasn't my problem. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah, moving so sorry. On, moving Thank on. you for that, Stuart. Thanks, Stuart. Peter. Moving on to Peter. Uh, Peter sent us a question. Oh, yeah. Peter sent us a question. He asked the question, says, when the water runs out of the Aquarole, do you need to turn off all the water uh, and the pump. Well, if it runs out, then I would advise turn off the water pump, personally. Um, we tend not to, because I just say to Michelle, when we're not on a service pitch, I just say, right, I'm just gonna fill up the water, and Michelle knows not to turn the taps on. But if there's, you know, um, if somebody forgets to, t to, or somebody does turn a tap on when you're going to empty the aqua, or going to fill the aqua roll, um, then the air is going to start being drawn back through the pump and um, once you get the aqua roll back you're then going to have to bleed the system again which is open all the taps and get the air out so um, I personally would say yes it's probably best just to pop off the uh, water pump if you are going to fill up the aqua roll. Thanks for that Peter. Okay and Lee Radford, hi Lee. No Dave Carts. Oh no sorry. You know, Dave Cutts. I beg your pardon. I'm jumping ahead. Dave, how can you, how can you forget David? He's one of our viewers from South Africa. So sorry, David. David, hello and welcome. And thank you so much for all of your comments and all of your emails. Yes, lovely to hear from you. all of your photos. Um, it's lovely to hear from you. You go. He says that he tows... I'm oh, sorry, I need my glasses. Can I have some of your water? Yes. People are thinking, is that water she's got? It's gin! <laughs> it's gin! It's 10 o'clock in the morning and it's gin! Oh, it's, it's 12 o'clock. It's water. <laughs> Sorry, David. Um, he says that he... Oh, he's the lawn man, lawnmower man again. Right. Right, David. Uh, he says he tows a rough roader caravan, which means punctures are more frequent. So a small tip is to carry a leveller used by motorhomers to drive the van onto thus making it much easier to get the jack under and also a lot less cranking to lift the van yep. he has also got a rear view mirror fit rear view camera fitted to the caravan which is a great asset for seeing the traffic following him as well as reversing with the tow vehicle okay so um for those of you who don't know a leveler is like uh, the, the most common ones are like a uh, like a wedge shaped thing and the caravan you put you put it in front of the caravan it's if, if the caravan isn't level so if one side needs to be brought up uh, you then drive the caravan onto it and it obviously raises the caravan up um, so what David's saying which is makes a lot of sense is um, for example if you've got a, if you have got a puncher if you put the leveler under the tire that's got the puncher bring the caravan forward so it drives onto the level it's going to lift the caravan up and basically that just saves you so much winding um, because the caravan's higher so you just can just um, great 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 tip yeah absolutely thank you David thank you thank you and just very very quickly just on that note of raising um, of jacking the caravan up um, we didn't say on a previous video when we talked about um, jacking the caravan up 
uh, we omitted to say, which a couple of you people have picked us up on, is um, if you have to change the tyre on a caravan, or change the wheel, um, if you are going to uh, lift the caravan up, you must make sure that the caravan is attached to your car. Please, please ensure that it is attached to your car with a breakaway cable on as well. And that's purely because when the caravan is up, if it's a single axle, uh, there is only one wheel left on the ground. Now, if it's not attached, that wheel will want to go, will want to move. So if it's attached to the car, you've got an extra form of, you know, something to good hold it good in advice. place. So good, good thanks advice. very, very much indeed for that, David. Lee Radford. Hi, Lee. And he says before setting off on a before setting off on a journey, always check the nose weight of your caravan to make sure you're not carrying too much weight. You can buy a little gauge to measure this very simply. Now, this yeah. is very important and we practice this, but we've never actually discussed yeah, it. Yeah, this is a case of practice, not preach. I mean, yes. I've done it. We've been away probably, I don't know, seven or eight times so far this year. And I think I've done it once. But then, in fairness to us, we know we don't have a huge amount of weight. There is just the two of us. Yes. Most of the stuff we carry, all the heavy stuff, we just put in the car. Um, so, um, you know, our car is absolutely ram jam full when we're yeah, going away. Yeah, I mean, we don't have children to bring with us in the car. So we, we've got the entire back of the car, whereas I know a lot of you have children. So, you know, the children will be in the back of the car and you'll have to put everything into the caravan. So. Yeah, I mean, we just said that we practice that, but we don't probably do it as frequently as we should. No. no. Um, but purely because the weight in the caravan doesn't really change, yeah. does it? Because we're no, carrying everything it in doesn't. the car. And, and in fairness, the, um, the gauge you can buy to, to check the nose weight, I mean, it's really simple. It's just a long piece like that. Um, goes under the, um, it goes under the hitch. Um, and you put the caravan down and it just tells you the weight of it. Uh, the gauges are really, really, really easy to use and I think they are about, you can get them from just under nine pounds. So not expensive. I said, we've got one, just don't use it as much as I should do. So thank you very, very much indeed for that comment. Right, Philip C, Slippery Mud and Holistic Healing, they have all written to us and asked, what does the magnet in the cassette toilet do? Yeah, we did a video some time ago on um, how to open um, a cassette, if the toilet cassette, if you need to. <clears throat> and I explained in that video that if you need to get to the magnet, the magnet is on a float. Um, and as the, um, as the container fills up, obviously the float goes up. Um, and what happens is that magnet, um, it sends a signal to the side of the toilet uh, where there is a sensor and when the magnet gets to the sort of sensor that sensor then realizes that the cassette is full and it will put a light on so basically that's all it does the magnet is purely there just to set the sensor off so your light then comes on on your toilet okay, on a separate lovely. toilet thank you thank you thank you very much for that one adrian and sandra and stephanie <coughs> uh... hi guys Sorry. Hi Adrian, Sandra and Stephanie, good afternoon. Uh, they have all written to let us know that instead of using a manual winder when raising or lowering their corner steadies, they use a cordless drill with a steady bar. Yeah. Uh, again, that's something that we practice and we've never really discussed. No, it, it's, it's one of those things that if you're a seasoned caravaner and if you, you know, you've been doing it for months or weeks, or, or not weeks, but for years, uh, you take it for granted. It's like, you know, the whole idea of our channel and things, videos like this, it's for new people or people who are just thinking about getting out there and where we all take it for granted yeah just get the electric screwdriver and electric drill out um you know people don't other people won't know about it so absolutely you can buy a cheap drill i think i bought one for i believe it was about 9.99 at um argos i believe it's the cheapest one i mean it doesn't i think it came with just about a box um and it does the job it just does the job you you do need to buy a steadies bar. They're called a steadies bar. They're about that long, and uh, one but one bit. Obviously, one end goes into your drill. The other end goes onto the um, the steady, and just push the button, and the steady just comes up. I mean, we've seen we've been here uh, four or five days now, and we've seen people arrive and leave, and they're still doing them manually. And you think, well, life's so much easier. Just use a drill. Yeah, it's so, much more convenient, isn't it? It is. It is. Having said that, 
can I just say uh, if you do do that make sure you keep the charger for the drill in the caravan because thankfully we did and when we um, set out five days ago on this trip um, I went to take the steadies up and my drill, had charged, my, my drill was out of charge so uh, we managed to charge it up so just remember to take the charger with you as well just shoot so you, in case you need it to charge up okay right so thank you for that thanks very Next much indeed one, I'm really sorry I don't know how to pronounce your surname is it Linda Linda Waiheke 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 um, apologies Linda if we haven't got that correct um, she says that she has a caravan checklist on her phone which uh, she uses every time they go away just to check things off an app like G-Task works we use Google Keep don't we for yeah, notes and what have you we do yeah. um, or alternatively you can print out your checklist laminate it and use a whiteboard marker to tick things off then you can rub it out and reuse it again the next time and then 999 and song 111 say they print a small checklist and stick it in the front window uh, so you can read it from the outside. Very clever idea. That's actually your one name, I believe. <laughs> what, 10999 song? 1099 oh, song. We don't know your first name, we're just using your... Oh, right, okay, so... The name that you use on YouTube. Yeah, they, they print a small checklist and just leave it in the front window so you can see it from outside. Clever idea, very, very good. Mm. Okay, Act Now One. Hello, hope you are yeah. good. Um, Regarding the Fiamma door lock the that Fiamma we showed. Fiamma, Fiamma, yeah, the Fiamma. Fiamma door lock we fitted oh, moons ago, many moons ago. Um, yeah, I, I actually saw a video that what, what they say, or what, sorry, what Act Now One says is that you can actually get the, um, the same make door lock where the, you can lock it from the inside as well as the outside which makes a huge huge amount of sense because if you're uh, sleeping I mean if you're in the UK it's not so bad uh, if you're on campsites because they're secure but certainly if you go over to France and um, stopping on air and stopping on airs yeah the, the cat they, they can be a little bit um, unsecure should we say and we have heard stories of people break trying to break into the people's caravans yeah. at night when they're asleep so um, Fiamma do a lock which is similar to ours except you can actually lock it from the inside as well as the out right moving on um, in a recent video we showed you how to sew loops on your towels um, to make it easier for drying that makes them easier to hang up and, and dry um, and we were bombarded with <laughs> loads of messages yeah. from all of you. Steve De Boer, again, sorry Steve, I don't know how to pronounce your surname. Petrolhead, Greg Lewis, Lozzie and Steve, Trevor and Sue from Posh Cats Camping. And they've hi, all, <laughs> hi everyone. Hi, You've everyone. all told us we have got to get microfiber towels. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, um, if we're honest, I mean, we, we met a uh, we met so many people this time out, yes, haven't it's we? Been we fabulous, met yeah. we met some great people, and uh, we were having um, a chat with a, a couple. Um, no, actually, it was Ian um, about three nights ago, and we talked about microfiber towels. And he has a microfiber towel that is is huge. I mean, it it is it's a giant size. It's that's, a giant size. size. It is, giant. and it goes into a bag like that, that sort of size. And we couldn't believe, and the weight of it is nothing. And I said, well. I'd be really worried it's not going to dry it. He said, Keith, it really, really works. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I was, after hearing from all of you, I was researching uh, microfiber towels to bring away with us this time, but it's an absolute minefield searching for them, and, I, and yeah. I really wasn't confident. So, I was going to ask all of you your recommendations of where you've purchased your towels. But as we said, our neighbour Ian, he said that he bought his from Mountain Warehouse and we looked at them yeah. and we've actually ordered them online while we've been away here. Yeah. So looking forward to getting home and yeah. and seeing that, well, what they're like. I'm so, really looking, yeah, that should be good. I mean, And uh, and I think looking at the website, they've already got a loop sewn into them. Have so they? they'll be perfect. I never noticed the loop. I just looked at the price, dear. <laughs> I just looked at the price. They were a great How price. Much? Oh, no, we got they a great price. They were ridiculously price. cheap. I mean, for great this price. huge towel, I think it was, under ten pounds? Well, yes, they they were on they were on sale anyway, and then it was, um, you know, we had a promotional code to get an extra twenty yeah. percent off. So, we saved about twenty five pounds. We did, we did. So we from bought the, a few. from what the total price would be. So, right, so thank you thank so much, you everyone, everyone. Trevor and Sue, thank you very much, and everybody else. <laughs> we do listen. <laughs> Why don't you speak to us? We listen. <laughs> 
Um, right, Marilyn Ma Mercer. Yes. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Uh, uh, she's got a few little go tips. That, yes, she said she uses a little bristled pastry brush to clean round the rubber on her windows. And she says her handheld vacuum cleaner doesn't get dust out of the track uh, on the door, you know, where the fly screen comes across. So she holds a straw in the end of the vacuum cleaner and then it sucks up all the dust in all the little crevices, which is really handy, great tip. And she also says she has a collapsible sweeping brush that she thinks she got from Betterware, which yeah. is great for sweeping out the awning carpet. Yeah, brilliant, great idea. Great idea. Thanks, I mean, Marilyn. use a little paintbrush or, yeah, that's absolutely fine. A pastry, di a pastry yes, brush, that works. Yeah, paintbrush is good as well. Yeah. Thanks for that, very much indeed for that, Marilyn Mercer. Right, email from Graham. Graham. And now this one we can't help with. So I think. It is a plea for help from Graham. He's asked us if we can ask you guys if you know the answer because we, we just don't know the answer to this one. So. He says that he's got a problem when hanging clothes in his wardrobe because his hangers are too wide to fit in the wardrobe and closing the door without them turning from one side to the other and then all his clothes fall on the floor. Um, he'd like to find some, I'm, I'm assuming that's, is that an older caravan? Uh, not necessarily. No, I thought, not, I thought I mean, Some motorhomes have the smaller, the, ward, the smaller wardrobes. So, yeah. I mean, maybe motorhomes, if you, Trevor Zoo, maybe, uh, if you know where the other, yeah. His I mean, question is, where does he get the, the, the smaller hangers? Um, I mean, you wouldn't want children's hangers because they'd be too small. Nothing would stay on them, would no, they? I don't know. So, so maybe, if you could help, I mean, it's not something that... If you know where... where I know um, anything about smaller where, hangers. Where, where you can get... Sorry, if you can help Graham out where you can get these... Um, instead of a standard hanger being that sort of width, he needs something slightly shorter. Um, do us a favour, just drop a line in the comments, or you can actually email us direct if you don't want to put a comment in the box. Just email us direct at info at Carefree Caravanning, yeah. and we will get back to Graham. And, yeah, so um, hope don't know. Sorry, Graham. Will help uh, as Graham. we said in our email, we we really don't know, but we would put it out. So we kept our word, and um, we're putting it out to you guys to see if you can help him. Don't know. Yeah. And as I say, I, it it may be on motorhomes as well. So. Um, Maybe motorhomers who are watching this um, may have an answer as well. Mm, yeah, hopefully. And finally. Right, finally. We've Linda. Linda Elizabeth Coles. Linda Elizabeth Coles, yes. Lovely to hear from you, Linda. Hi, Linda. And now, Linda has been t um, touring with caravans for 35 years and is currently on caravan number 11. Congratulations. Wow. Well <laughs> She's done. given us her top tips um, that she wants to share with all of you from all her years of experience. So, number one, liquid hand soap. She says it's absolutely perfect for cleaning sinks in the caravan. It is especially good for plastic ones and also your chemical toilet. Never use anything abrasive and it's also great for shining up your silver and gold jewellery. <laughs> We don't have any of that, though, do we? What, jewellery? <laughs> jewellery. No gold. <laughs> Number two. The tiny little rubber bands that you get around a bunch of spring onions. Use two of these as replacement washers when your water pump gives up. Um, and, you know, it just acts as an emergency until you can get out and get a new one. Yeah. Number three. To prevent clothes falling off hangers whilst travelling, buy large round curtain hooks, curtain rings, the ones with a smaller ring attached at the bottom where the hook usually goes through. Take off the wardrobe rail and place the large round curtain rings on the rail, refit the, refit the wardrobe rail and then put your hangers through the small ring at the bottom. This stops all your lovely clothes falling off into a pile at the bottom of the wardrobe and they are all in place at journey's end and she also says number four use zip close plastic freezer food bags when you open biscuits or buns it saves carrying boxes and tins etc and lastly number five she keeps a small sealed container of water in the washroom just in case the toilet flush is empty during the night. Yeah, that's a clever idea. And I love the last bit that she's asked us to uh, put her over there saying, and we quote, hope my tips prove helpful to everyone. And in the meantime, 
happy caravanning and good health to all who enjoy our brilliant hobby. Yay. Well thank done, you, Linda. Linda. <laughs> In fact, you know what? Thank you absolutely everybody um, yes. for all your comments. Thank you so much for taking the time to email us, to um, to message us, messenger us, or to comment in our boxes. Thank you so so much. And can we say a huge huge welcome to all the people from not just the UK. I mean, there are from Europe, America, we've got America, New we've got Zealand, Australia, Canada, we've got, New Zealand, we've got Canada, we've got South India, Africa. I believe. Yeah, India. hi to every single one of you. Absolutely. Please, please, please keep sending us your experiences, your tips. We your are stories. so humbled with everybody who's watching us and subscribing. Thank you all so very much. And we're just giving back. I mean, these comments, they're not from us, they are purely from people who watch our channel who subscribe to our channel we're just giving back and sharing their comments as well as we've said in so many n n hundreds of all times we've said that we are not experts we're just sharing our experiences and now we're trying to share yours as well so um, yeah hopefully you've enjoyed it yeah, and we've sorry, gone long it's probably enough. Been a very long video but yeah, hopefully you found that. it useful and helpful and that's it for this time it is so both from sorry from thank you from both of us and thank you all for watching and on that note uh, please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already the caravan will appear over Michelle's left shoulder uh, make sure you click the notification buttons as well and be sure to like if you can remember as well and on that note thank you very much indeed for watching we'll see you next time thank you bye 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 now bye bye